Hi, good evening. I promised you a few days ago uh, that I would talk about uh, folklore and legends and healing uh, here in Ireland. I suppose some of the cures that was practiced uh, all over the country and have, um, I suppose, gone into disrepute uh, or been literally forgotten about. But these old uh, cures uh, existed between four, six thousand years BC and were practiced uh, by the Druids when the Druids practiced and their magic. If we have a look at some of the old sites uh, that's uh, been recently investigated and I have one particular site in mind, it's Boho. Boho uh, is uh, uh, an old site uh, with megalithic tomb and uh, an old graveyard up in Fermanagh. And it's been recently uh, investigated by the uh, medical people and they discovered that the healing properties of uh, the soil in Boho now, the sages and the druids practiced their magic, I'm sure, in that area between four and 6,000 years BC. Now, they knew the benefits of the uh, healing uh, clay, in fact, they used the clay from the old sites five, six thousand years ago. And we've just recently discovered, in the last couple of years, the importance of the uh, healing ability of the soil in that area. This is just one area in Ireland that's uh, come to the forefront because there's been a, a documentary by the BBC and some of the scientists are investigating the benefits and the cures <coughs> that uh, revolve uh, around these ancient sites. Boho in Fermanagh is just uh, one that's in the news at the moment. I'm familiar with this type of healing. And uh, if we look at uh, <coughs> biblical times, we look at the healings of uh, Christ. Uh, you know, there was a typical uh, example here of uh, when Christ took the boy's hand, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the boy's eyes with this, the boy that was born blind. And after washing his eyes, his sight came back. Now I'm sure 4,000, 6,000 years ago, the Druids uh, and uh, other healers used the same type of process to kill. They had their prayers and their healing wells. And of course, uh, they uh, used all of this for the benefit 
of others. I believe uh, that the use of herbs uh, was very much practiced in, in those days as well. And of course our uh, <clears throat> uh, modern medicine is a, a derivative of um, all the uh, herbs and uh, that were out there for man's use and benefit. Now, I'm going back to Boho again. Boho is a very, very interesting uh, area, uh, and uh, the soil around uh, the area apparently has uh, magical cures. It cures MRSA, I believe. Medics have investigated this and are investigating the different types of soil and taking samples and analysing it and they've uh, uh, come up with uh, the uh, idea perhaps or the, uh, that the soil will cure MRSA. Of course, there are other herbs that cure MRSA. There are herbs like elecampane, uh, tested uh, for their uh, qualities. Uh, and uh, I think two doctors down in Cork some years ago. Um, came up with the uh, idea that they should test some of the old herbs that the old healers used. And so Ella Campaign uh, was won uh, with uh, fantastic results. Mullion or Mullen was another. It was used for chest and lung problems. Uh, the other name for Mullen, of course, is... Uh, Aaron's rod. Uh, all these herbs were used by the ancients, by the Druids. And for the past 2,000 years, of course, they've been used extensively from, uh, for coughs and colds and ringworms and for all the uh, various illness that uh, people had at the time. I'm fascinated by all of this, uh, uh, the various types of, of, of healing. Now, uh, and my own healing takes a different path. Uh, it's what I can do all the basics uh, and the basic cures, but I can also take it farther than that. Uh, in some cases, and uh, I'm thinking about uh, a little boy recently who came in to us about two weeks or four weeks ago, and he was blind in one eye, deaf in one ear, and he came to us in a, in a wheelchair. Couldn't walk very well, but within five minutes, that little boy was running around the table and the patch was taken off his eye, his sight came back and his hearing came back as well. And a few days later mum and dad took him to, uh, down to Racket Hall where we had uh, an open day and in front of the crowd of 100 or 150, they spoke about Nathan, about what they called the miracle, the sight returning, hearing returning, and his walk much, much improved. This is just one example. Uh, of course, uh, well, maybe cures like herbs can help, 
in cases like this. But I didn't use herbs. I didn't use medicine of any kind other than the healing abilities that's been given to me by the good Lord. I practiced this healing all my life. I devote my whole attention uh, to, uh, to healing uh, others, humans, and animals alike. And in some cases we get a little bit of criticism about, oh, this is the placebo effect. Well, how does the placebo effect work with animals? Check out some of our videos. We have hundreds of videos on MatthewLennonHealer.com and on all platforms you will see perhaps hundreds and hundreds of videos all taken at the time of curing and healing all taken without any preparation whatsoever other than an agreement with the uh, patient concern, concerned to uh, give their uh, authorization for us to uh, do a video. We don't of course do or video everyone, only those of course who give us permission. You know, warts, ringworms, shingles, bleeding, seizures, all that type of uh, healing uh, and basic type healing was done uh, in the villages and in the towns all over Ireland many, many years ago. Even to the present day, you will get people who have healers, gifted healers, who have the ability <coughs> to uh, to cure. I am one of those. But my healing goes in a different direction. I work with serious illness, difficult problems. This is something that you can't learn. You can't take a course and, and learn how to do this. One member of my family can do this. It's passed on from male to female, female to male, as all simple cures. But I wanted to differentiate, if I may, between the various types of uh, healing. Most uh, healers, bless them for what they do, uh, maybe uh, would uh, cure or have one or two particular cures. Mine is a little bit different. It's a lot different. In fact, I don't do cures now as such, although people ring me every day with uh, problems about uh, with animals or with, with humans uh, and uh, I just ask you again, rather than go through, uh, bore you with hundreds uh, of uh, uh, testimonials, just go to our site, MatthewLennonHealer.com and you'll find all the info there. But I wanted to, uh, also to explain the difference between uh, someone with a single cure or two or three and uh, you go to that person once or twice, usually three times and uh, most of the time a cure is uh, uh, effective. But mine is different. It's different insofar that 
I spend every day of my life focused on this type of work and I can do and uh, perform uh, healings that people call miracles. Like hearing, uh, returning, the same with sight, uh, back problems that have been uh, maybe uh, haunted a person for many, many years and suddenly when I work with them, it disappears. I've had a lady uh, quite recently, uh, I think in uh, Racket Hall, who had a back pain for 30 years. And she told me that, well, she told everyone in the hall uh, that she'd been to every dog's body in the country. Uh, and within five minutes, her pain had gone. This is quite normal. This is quite normal with me uh, and I don't claim uh, to be able to cure every disease. You, the patient, has to put in some input as well. I get people challenge me to say, look, if you can cure me then uh, I'll believe in you and I'll do this and I'll uh, um, uh, spread the word. Well, I say, I don't do challenges. If you go to your doctor and you go with a negative mindset to say, ah, oh, doctors are no good, the tablets that they give you and the antibiotics, they're no good either, and you're just wasting your time. You're wasting your time if the doctor tells you that you've got to get rid of perhaps whatever is causing your problem, like overindulgence, whether it's food, uh, alcohol, uh, abusing your body in whatever way, different ways. And if your uh, doctor or your uh, herbalist or tells you to address these matters and you don't do it, then you're wasting your time and his. It's no different to me. Very sad. I tell you, obviously, to address your problems, the problems that are perhaps causing your disease. I remember I spoke to... Uh, a young man with a serious uh, weight problem and I just mentioned uh, certain foods that he should uh, avoid and to go to his dietitian and talk to him or her about the cause of the problem and he said look my doctors told me this years ago, and that doesn't work. Now you're telling me, and uh, you know, I come to you as the healer to address my problem. And I said, well look, I hand it right back to you. You and your habits and your abuse is causing your problem. So first of all, you've got to just address the matter yourself. Take it on board that it's your health, that it's your body, and the toxicity that you are pumping into it every day is causing your problems. Your liver problems, your lung problems, man. kidneys, heart. And so perhaps you need to address your lifestyle. Are you anxious? Is 
are causing side effects. You need to address and help the doctor and the healer and uh, the uh, uh, dietitian, etc., uh, etc., et to help you. We can't take over your life. You have to do it. You have to take control of your own lifestyle. And you have to take it on board that this is your problem that you created. <coughs> and you go to your doctor and you say, ah, oh, he's no good. He's doing the best he can for you. You go to the healer and say, ah, oh, he's useless. He told me uh, to, to do the same. So, unless you address your problems, then you won't be healed. I suppose we're all uh, familiar with um, the old healing wells across Ireland that were uh, used, maybe uh, going back uh, four, five, six thousand years ago. They worked for the people at that time because the people had no other means of healing or help. They depend on the local healers to help them with their problems and usually they did. People walk into uh, my clinics and <coughs> excuse me, they tell me that they have a particular problem. And I look at the person and usually I'm able to tell what's wrong. This is I suppose a form of intuition. This and these are the tools and the abilities that I've got in order to do the work that I do. While you might say, look, my problem is in my big toe and I think, well, look, it's in your little finger or it's in your liver or whatever. Sometimes people find it very difficult to believe and accept all this. But the healers and the sages of old could do this. I can do it as well. Just the same as you can have someone with a dousing rod or uh, something uh, of that nature to divine the depth of water and uh, to uh, find lost objects, etc., etc., this is just an ability. Everyone doesn't have this ability. But then again, everyone doesn't have the ability to paint a picture like that. And so, we look at the artist. What are the qualities that the artist has to paint a picture like that? They're in tune, perhaps, with certain <coughs> vibrations that gives them the ability to paint a beautiful picture. The same as you have people with a good voice and uh, or uh, they're musical and they can take out, uh, listen to a tune and whip out the guitar or whatever and play that tune. That is because that particular person uh, is tuned in to be able to uh, have an ear for music. 
I can't do it. I can't sing for the life. But there are certain aspects of healing that I can do and have practiced over the years. It's a gift. Like I said before, I've been offered an open check to teach and I can't do that. I can't teach you how to do the work I do. I wish I could, but I can't. And you can't take a course and you can't do a diploma or take a do a PhD on the work that I do. Well, who would teach you in the first place? And so the gifts that have existed <coughs> uh, in certain families across Ireland and maybe other parts of the world as well are sacred to that healer, that person using the gift. And so, I want to take you back again, and I want you to have a look, perhaps on Google, Boho in Fermanagh, where the clay there is used as an antibiotic, and that will cure MRSA. This is what the researchers have said. But then again, the ancients used this system 4,000 years ago. 6,000 years ago. So we're now researching something that was known to the sages and to the ancients thousands of years ago. Well, it's my wish for the new year that you address your problems, that you look at your lifestyle, and that you evaluate and take it on board. Whatever you need to do, you have to take it on board here. Go to your doctor, go to your physician, go to your herbalist, go to your advisors, go to your dietitian, and just look at your lifestyle. Don't just leave it in the hands of your doctor or your healer. Take part yourself. And my wish is that you will be one of those who, in taking all this on board, will improve your lifestyle, make you a better person, and may the good Lord be with you today and all days. Thank you. And we'll be back again with... Uh, maybe another addition uh, to this little talk in a week or two. I have perhaps detailed uh, maybe in uh, some of the posts about uh, the power of prayer. Uh, and divine healing at work. I look forward to talking with you again. God bless and good night.